So you have a Roomba that's acting like this. But you want a Roomba that's acting like this. Okay guys, today's video is the proper way to address the Roomba black carpet issue. So you're probably familiar with this issue if you're here, so I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining it. But basically what'll happen is the cliff sensors in your Roomba, when they find black, they think that it's a cliff and it won't go past it. So in this situation, on this carpet, the Roomba would just bounce back and forth around that black border and it wouldn't be able to get out because it thinks it's a cliff. So this is one of Roomba's newest units, a 675. I think it just came out this year. Great unit at a great price point. Um, most of the videos out there on YouTube uh, are going to show you the foil trick, which is basically take your lead sensors or cliff sensors, one, two, three, four, and cut out white paper and tape them over each one, or use foil or HVAC tape, which I also tried. Uh, to put it over each of these sensors to reflect back the uh, infrared to trick it. Uh, unfortunately, it, neither of those methods work on this new Roomba. Um, it may work on older units. I don't know why it's not working on this unit, but I tried a lot of different ways and it's not working. So I'm going to do this the right way, uh, which is to remove each of these sensors. And there's a quick and easy way to point the infrared transmitter and receiver in each one of these sensors at each other. So there's no tape, none of this nonsense foil which is probably just going to come off eventually anyway or get dirt in there and then your modification would fail uh, this method will actually uh, stand the test of time and it's easy to change back if you ever want to put it back to stock mode so uh, let's get started on looking at how to do that so let's get to the sensor so we can do this the right way first remove your sweeper one screw second one two three four screws remove your base plate there's 10 small screws, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Remove those. Also remove your battery. It comes right out. Now your bumper's free under here, but it's also attached to a wire. So we're not even going to need to remove this. Quick trick to removing this plastic up here. Don't try prying around it. You can get it off that way, but you're likely going to damage something. There's a quick release right here. If you hold this up, then you can pull the plastic out easily. Eh, now it's off. Now you need to remove all top screws. the next layer off. Now we have access to the display. Take that off. It's two pieces. You see they'll fall apart. I would just keep them there so you remember. A nice mat here which has alignment notches on it so when you put it back you know where to align it. Now we have our display that must be removed. Now we have a plastic cover for the motherboard. Underneath we have the motherboard. This little gasket here. This is an interesting port. It's probably for diagnostics at the factory, but that's covered up by the plate. Then we're going to take this. For the side. Careful with your screwdriver here because if you knock one of these resistors or capacitors it's probably not going to like that. And then you'll be micro soldering. That's not the goal. Okay, motherboard screws are all removed. Now we're going to take our Wi Fi antenna off. We'll just pop that little socket off of there. 
see. Easy. Get these guys out of here. Give it some wiggling. Don't try to force it. It's on these studs. There's studs here. One, two, three, four. If you try to peel at it, you're going to crack something. Just wiggle it. And now it's free-ish. <laughs> I'm going to take this bumper wire off over here. If it'll let me. Here you can see what's underneath. Let me make sure that's still in frame. You've got all kinds of connectors over here. I'm not going to take those off. I just want this bumper out of my way, so we're going to remove this one. Okay, the bumper's free. Now, we've got the motherboard loose. Along with it, all these proximity sensors on the front. We don't have issues with the proximity sensors. We have issues with what we finally have access to, the cliff sensors, one, two, three, four. Now, to remove these sensors, you're going to have to th find something long and thin and metallic, like this paring knife. Get it down in this angle and pry away from yourself with a moderate amount of force. When you do, this will release. Now, I'll give you a visual on what I just did in there, so you can figure it out a little easier. This is your cliff sensor. All right, it slides down in the channel in there. You've got to get your tool, thin metallic, get down here, and pry away from yourself to release at the bottom of this you see the, you know, let me get the glare off it. One, two right there. Better angle. Get us something to point with right here and right here. That's what's biting down in there and you're prying against to release. So once you see that, it'll be much easier to get your other three out. This is your sensor. This normally is pointing down, right? We just took it out of the channel. Now once you take it out, we have to dis disassemble the sensor. There's a latch right here, and the same on the other side. You gotta remove that latch using whatever your preference of tool is. There's one, and be careful or it'll break. That's one loose, and that's two loose, and the sensor will come apart. Now once the sensor's apart, you'll see there's what looks like two LEDs in here. One there, and one there. One dark, and one light. The light is a transmitter. This is a receiver, so infrared transmitter, infrared receiver. So usually when you use white paper or foil, you're trying to trick that so it reflects in there, right? Well, it didn't work on this unit, and I don't think it works on new units, maybe only old units. So what we're going to do is reposition those in such a way that uh, they'll be pointing directly at each other, okay? Get your knife or whatever you're using in there. Now instead of prying away from you like I did before, it's actually you need more leverage than that. It's a considerable amount of leverage to release that down there. I found that twisting the knife while pushing up gives you a really good amount of leverage there in the center. And it came free pretty quickly that time. Now that you get it out, well, this one has the other thing blocking it. Now that you get it out of here, then you go in and do your other two catches. There's one little catch here. Right, there's a catch, and then another catch on the other side. Okay, that's both catches released, I believe. Now you got your clear lens off. Now this top part comes off like I showed you before. All right, good. Then your transmitter and your receiver can come out of the sensor housing by just lifting them. You don't have to push like I did the first time. Now they're out. Tape them together, put back together. Uh, where it belongs and repeat instead of electrical tape. I'm just going to take some shrink wrap Some shrink wrap. I have assorted sizes here from other projects, but uh, Do it that way cleaner and easier, right? So just take the legs of these stick both guys in there. So they're right next to each other 
Looks like I'm gonna need a bigger size. Get some shrink wrap over them. So they're perfectly side by side. And that should be good. This one's shrink wrapped. Now that it's cooled down, you can see both units, the sender and the receiver, are perfectly parallel to each other, frozen in that position like Han Solo and Carbonite. Okay, now we're just going to put it back together in the reverse order um, that we took it apart. So you're going to put this perimeter barrier of proximity sensors, that's what each of these are, same deal, you have transmitter and receiver on all of these, you see, um, going all the way across, that sits here, make sure you poke in any wires that are loose so it sits nice and flat. Then we're gonna put our motherboard back on, our front bumper back on, all those housing pieces back on, and hopefully it works. Motherboard is in place, one, two, three, four studs aligned, this guy is aligned, antenna, power cords are free. Let's go back to our motherboard screws here. Just finished putting it back together, so let's bring this upstairs and see how it likes the carpet, or if it even works. So before, this thing used to always, or any of my Roombas, because I've got three, um, any of them would get stuck in these black squares, and it was really super annoying up on the, on the top floor, so let's see what happens now. Yeah, he's ignoring them. The Roomba will still slow down when it uh, approaches anything proximity-wise because we left all of those transmitters and receivers along the perimeter in the front intact. So you'll see it still slows down, it doesn't ram into things. And the other really important thing for me anyway is it'll still pay attention to the, uh, the no-fly zone sensor towers that they sell. You know, when you can set them up with a linear don't pass this area or a radius. Uh, of don't come into this area mode and this is really important for me because this is my top floor Roomba so now that the Roomba doesn't have any cliff detection it can take a dive down the stairs but what I did was and now I'll show you that it actually still works is put one of these guys near the stairs so let's do a test alright Roomba hopefully you don't dive off of here Ah, you see he stopped. Very good. And he slowed down. Get out of there. So in hindsight, there's a few things I want to mention here. This is a moderate difficulty disassembly and reassembly, so if you're not used to working with the uh, small electronics and fragile electronics and mechanical components, you might want to think twice about doing this. Uh, there is, of course, the possibility of breaking something when you take apart your Roomba and put it back together again. Um, all in all though, if you're comfortable working with these kinds of things, it shouldn't be too difficult if you follow the video. This is a great mod, it met my expectations in every way. Uh, it will last the test of time, it won't fall apart like taping foil or taping white paper over your cliff sensors, uh, so it'll definitely last and it's easy to reverse and return your Roomba back to stock uh, if you needed to change it back to the original configuration uh, at some future time. As always, I greatly appreciate any likes on the video, and please hit subscribe. If you like this video, there's a lot more uh, from mods and projects to come. Thank you very much, and I look forward to hearing any feedback on how this modification went for you.